this video is running through definitions for planar graphs and how they apply to Euler's formula. So firstly, what is a planar graph? Planar graphs are graphs that can be drawn without any overlapping edges. And so that means that our edges only uh, meet at vertices. So you can see here in this first example, we've got an overlapping edge here. So at the moment, that graph is not drawn as planar. However, if we simply take this edge going across that leading diagonal and redraw it on the outside of our um, graph, then we have made our graph planar because no longer have any overlapping edges there. So sometimes you need to think about redrawing a graph so that you can check whether it's planar or not. And we'll look at some more examples of that in this video. A couple of things that are really handy to note. All simple graphs with four vertices or fewer are planar. So remember a simple graph is one that has no loops and no multiple edges. Second thing is that a complete graph with five or more vertices is non-planar. It's not possible to draw them as a planar graph. So another piece of handy information to have. Once we've been able to draw our graphs as planar, there are three key components that we want to be able to um, take note of. So edges and vertices we are already familiar with. Remember the edge is the line representing the connections between the vertices and the vertices are the points on the graph, often representing a person or a place or an object. Faces are also known as regions and these are things that occur within the graph. So if we have a little look at these videos here, we can see a face you think about, can I colour in a region? Okay, so this graph here is planar and it has one, two, three regions. So we do count any region around the outside of the graph as well. So think about um, these edges as fences on a property I can still own the property that is outside of my fence where I've decided to put my fence, but the fence may have um, blocked off a particular area, say my front garden. The second example here, at the moment that graph is not planar, so we need to redraw it before we can consider the number of edges and faces. So again, here we have, we're colouring in our regions and we can see this particular example, once again, has three faces or three regions. But we can't identify that when it's not drawn in a planar form. So very important, the first step is always to redraw your graph as planar. So when I need to redraw my graph, things to consider. Look at any edge that overlaps. So here we can see we've got these two edges that are overlapping in the center. So is it possible just to take one of those edges, potentially this diagonal here, and redraw that edge around the outside of the graph? And so therefore by doing that, I've actually been able to reconstruct my graph still with all of the same information that the original graph contained, that's very important, you need to have all of the same connections still being shown. But now I've been able to redraw it so that it is no, it is no longer overlapping and is now a planar representation. And that means I can now easily count my number of regions when I need to do any work with um, Euler's formula. Another thing to consider, maybe instead of looking at the edges themselves, but look at a vertex. So where does one of the problem edges run into? And could I actually move that vertex into a different space in the graph to get rid of that crossing over? So if you imagine that I pick up this vertex and drag it into this part of my graph here, what impact might that have? And if you're going to do something like that, it might be helpful to label your vertices so that you can keep a track of all of that information. Now this happens to be a complete graph so that we know that every edge, sorry, every vertex has a direct connection to all others. But if it wasn't a um, complete graph, we might consider actually um, finding the degree of each of these vertices 
and then using that to help us map out what the new graph might look like. So effectively here we're just drawing an isomorphic graph, a different version of the same information. And so by relocating that vertex C, if I then grow in and draw my information, so A connects to all others, B connects to all others, and C connects to all others. And so now I've been able to recreate that graph in a different way and again end up with my one, two, three, four faces of the graph that I've been able to represent it as a planner. Here's another example of drawing planner graphs as planner. So I'd encourage you to hit pause now and have a go at your chosen method to redraw. And there's one option. So important to note, edges do not have to be straight lines. If they were straight lines to begin with and you need to make them curves, that is absolutely okay. Another example here, again, hit pause and use your preferred method to draw this as planner. And here's one option for redrawing this graph. So in this example, I decided to take vertex B and relocate it because it was causing a few of the problems in the middle of the graph here. And so it is important in this case to maybe take note of what were the degrees of each of those vertices so that I can keep a track and make sure when I redraw it that I have the same information in my new version of that graph, in my planner version. And again, we see we've got some curved edges there to make it work. The point of being able to draw our graphs as planner or identify them as planner is quite often to apply Euler's formula. So Euler discovered that there was a connection between the number of vertices, edges and faces in these connected planner graphs. And so we utilise this formula here where we've got the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces will equal two when we have a connected planner graph. So to be able to utilise this formula, we need to draw our graph as planner first, and then we either use the formula to verify the status of the graph, or perhaps we're given some of the information about the graph and asked to find, for instance, how many vertices must it have in order to be a planner graph. So with this first one here, first step is to identify how many vertices, and we can see we've got four, how many edges? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And how many faces? Remember, they are the regions created by the graph. So in this case, four. And then basically, if we have to verify the status, we would be showing that calculation where vertices minus edges plus faces equals two. And so checking that the left hand side equals the right hand side. Now remember you need to use bod mass and work your way across the page. And so we can see four minus six is negative two plus four is positive two. So we have that. So our left hand side equals our right hand side and therefore we have verified um, Euler's formula. Another common example, as I said previously, is that we are given some of the information about a planner graph. And so this question, nowhere in the question does it actually mention Euler's formula. So the expectation is, is when you see the phrase planner graph, that you know we need to then refer to our vertices minus edges plus faces equals two. So this rule will play a part. And we're told here that we have five vertices and six faces and asked how many edges does the graph have. So we have five vertices, we have six faces, and we're asked to find the number of edges. So now we have a little equation that we can solve. So we can utilise our calculator to solve that for us, or we can do that by hand. Just again, remembering if you're doing it by hand, that you are very careful about using bod mass and following all of your normal rules in mathematics. So if we go ahead and solve this, we're going to subtract um, six, so I get negative four, 
and then negative edges minus the 5, negative 9. So that means I have 9 edges in this graph. Now to be sure that you've got the right answer, you might decide to try and draw that graph so that you can verify that it can be done. So as long as I have drawn that as planner, it shouldn't really matter where I've put those edges as long as I'm trying to create the faces required. And I can say I've got one, two, three, four, five, and the outside region, six faces there. Our final example here. So we're told that the graph is planar and asked to find how many faces does the graph contain. Now this was a multiple choice question from an exam and so the obvious incorrect answer that is going to be in the options is without redrawing it, someone counting all of the little regions that have been cut off there. So as soon as you see the word planner, you need to remember that your first step is to redraw as planner. Now you might not need to physically redraw it if you're good visually, but what I would consider is anything where there's that crossover. If I can get rid of those two edges from inside the graph and draw them around the outside. And so if we do a quick sketch of that, again, I'm going to just put all the vertices basically in the same spot draw the information that's not causing me a problem, making sure I get all of that information on the graph and sort of work your way around systematically. You want to make sure you're not forgetting something as you go. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get all of those pieces in depending on which ones you've decided to move. And then perhaps just doing a quick check that you've got the same degree on all of your vertices before you go any further. Once you're sure, then it's about counting the regions. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and the outside, seven. Seven regions or seven faces for this particular graph. That's it for um, planner graphs and a little intro into Euler's formula. So the key thing to remember for this section, as soon as you see the word planner graph, you need to remember to redraw and then head to that page or to the formula for Euler's formula. Okay, good luck.